Let's give all glory to God. Let's bless each other. Be at peace. You're the missionaries to save the world. You shall take possession of their land. Uh, today, uh, our second service choir, the uh, same as, uh, has combined with the first service choir. There are people who have who cannot enter here, and they're listening to it, the service in a different place. But wherever you are, through the power of God that transcends time and space, uh, may you have may you may this time be the time the most blessed time. Really, Jesus is the way. It's a short message today. But inside of Christ, we must find everything inside of this today's worship. And I bless you in the name of Christ that you you may find that. Somebody asked me once, I said, are you in a hardship? And I asked him, why? Is there somebody that's uh, making you fall into hardship? And then I asked that person, why? And say you keep telling us don't fight. And say is somebody fighting? <clears throat> and this one person, uh, they know a person that's in China, <clears throat> and that person got a call saying, uh, "Is Hana Church? Does is something going on?" The last week we had a service on a fight that cannot be a fight, and then the week before that was uh, there's a different target that we must fight. That is why uh, the people think that if there is a problem inside the church or is somebody fighting inside the church, and also today the same, it's also talking about fighting. I said. Uh, don't fight a battle in vain. I said, don't fight a useless fight. If you look in the book of Deuteronomy, chapters 2 and 3, in one word, it's fight a good fight. I said, don't fight a useless fight. You must fight a good fight. And this is what it's talking to us about in Deuteronomy chapters 2 through 3. If there's somebody that really received uh, the greatest blessings in the New Testament, it's Paul. But Paul said, if you see in Ephesians chapter 6, our fight is not a fight of flesh and blood. It's a spiritual battle. Hey, the person that received the most answers and the person that uh, really did the work of God the, uh, the most, he uh, said that the walk of faith it is not a fight of uh, flesh and blood. It, it's a spiritual battle. And if you see in today's uh, verses, on uh, today's passage, the hold, you have seen things and you have heard things and hold to that as your evidence and don't fight a useless fight and fight the battle that it's a necessary fight. The God that has split the Red Seas with us, God that has led us through the wilderness is with us. That is why we must fight the correct battle. And that is what is talking to us about inside the Bible today. If there is a characteristics of people who have failed, what what is it? It is they have uh, fought the wrong 
target. They are fighting a fight, but they're fighting a, a incorrect battle. And that is what it is talking to us about inside the Book of Deuteronomy. What did the people do inside the... Uh, what is the most flaw in receiving grace from God? It's fighting a different, uh, incorrect battle. And what's hindering us the most to do world evangelization is fighting an incorrect battle. Because the battle that we are fighting is a battle that we have no choice but to have victory. That is why we must fight the correct battle. We must cur fight the correct battle, but to do that, what must we confirm? God has called us in advance. God didn't call us because He wants to make us work and do evangelism. He called us to be with us. Before evangelism, be, uh, enjoying that God is with me is first. The happiness that comes out of that God being with me there's nothing you can compare with the world. Are you happy because you have received a lot of answers? Or are you happy because you have a lot of possession? Are you happy just because you are uh, you're living a better life than others? No, that's not it. God is with us. God is with me. I must enjoy that. And that is the happiest time. And uh, Christ who had finished everything uh, promised us. He said, I will be with you to the ends of the earth. And he has finished everything on the cross and he promised us, I will be with you to the ends of the earth. And we are that children of God. God is with me, that children of God. And to do the correct spiritual battle, you must enjoy, uh, you must confirm that God is with me. And secondly, in all of your daily life, you must enjoy the mystery of Christ every day. You must enjoy the mystery of Christ every day. Christ is the standard for all of our walk of faith. To us, for us, we have two things that always come out together. If a problem comes, there is something that God has given us, and in other, in the opposite. Satan attacks us. The gospel and legalism is something that you cannot really pull apart. It's the same thing as Satan and uh, God and Satan. So where must our standard be? It must be only Christ. Inside of Christ, everything must come out. This means, does this mean is we don't need anything else? No, it's different from that. Everything must come out of Christ. This means that Christ is everything and experiencing it. And when we do that, we are able to see other things correctly. <laughs> and our uh, and eyes to see this incident and the churches will be different. In early church, they gave everything to the church and they lived their walk of faith. 
because they knew and they found the mystery that inside of Christ there is everything. That is why they could they could just give everything to the church. If you see in Colossians 2.8, all the things of this world, they do not follow after uh, Christ. And again, if you see in the Bible, in Colossians, that inside of Christ, all of our knowledge and all treasures are hidden inside of Christ. And Paul confessed that uh, in Christ is everything and God took care of his future. If you know your future, you will know your present today. And why the problems of today have come and you will be able to know that. That is why in no matter what the circumstances the uh, Paul faced, it was okay. All of our walk of faith, the standard is Christ. Every day inside of Christ, our life must be edited, uh, planned, and designed inside of Christ. And first, God has called us to be with us, and secondly, all of our standard must be uh, Christ. And if there is a blessing over all blessings, it is prayer. When we pray, yes, it's important for us to receive answers, but there is something more important than receiving answers. And it is our spiritual state. If you enjoy that God being with me and finding everything inside of Christ and really enjoying that, uh, enjoying that is our spiritual state. Enjoying that God being with me is the most important fact and the most important blessing that we must enjoy. And God leading us, and He is with us, and we are able to enjoy that. Evangelism isn't something that I do. When you're able to enjoy that God being with you through prayer, then people, God will place it to you. Before my works, of God's power must be first. Before my plans, enjoying God's power is first. That is why David confessed in Psalms 23.1. He said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Because God is with me, I, He lacked nothing. That's what he confessed. And Daniel's three friends, when even if they went into the fires, they cannot serve the idols. Whatever the circumstances or the environments they were in, it was okay for them because they enjoyed that God is being with them through prayer. That is why no matter what the environment was or the circumstances was, it was okay for them. That is why to fight the spiritual battle that we must really fight, that we must enjoy that God is with us, God has called us to be with us, and all of our standards must be Christ. This means uh, I must be able to experience this every day that inside of Christ there is everything and prayer. And here, you are able to receive the knowledge that God gives. Where does the knowledge that God gives come out? It is from enjoying that God is with me and everything is coming out of Christ and through prayer, you are able to see this. And from here, you are able to receive the knowledge that God gives you and you are able to receive the answer to change the world. That is why you are not fighting a 
a useless battle. And said, the first is don't fight uh, the wrong battle. Because all the battle in the, of the world is a wrong fight. For the Israelites, whenever they faced problems, they resented Moses. Resenting Moses wasn't just resenting only Moses. They resented against God. It's a different battle. It's the wrong battle. Last week, we saw that don't fight with the descendants of Esau and Lot because that is a wrong battle. They're pretty much uh, they're still the uh, brothers of the Israelites. And when they were trying to go inside the Israelites or trying to enter the land of Canaan, they opened up the way, the path, so that they could enter the land of Canaan. And when they were thirsty and when they were hungry, they gave them food and water. That is why don't fight with those descendants. Because they are the brothers of the Israelites. Because fighting with them is the wrong battle. But if you see in uh, today's passage, verse 1, it said, Next we turned and went up along the road towards Bashan, and a king of Bashan with his whole army marched out to meet us in battle of Edrai. It said, they marched out to meet us in battle. This means they went up against God. This is a, a greater uh, force than uh, the King Shion's force, a uh, Sion's force. And it said, all these cities were fortified with high walls and with gates and bars. It was fortified with high walls. It said, with gates and bars, and there were also a great many unwalled villages. It said, you can think nobody could go past this wall. If you see in the Bible, you can see that it may seem as if the unbelievers are greater in strength than the believers and we can fall into misconception. It might seem like the unbelievers, they have a greater strength than the believers and we are deceived by this. If you see in the Bible, Cain was stronger than Abel and the Nephilim's they were so strong. If you see in Genesis 6, 4, it said they're the heroes. And even uh, Lot had more things than uh, Abraham. And you can see that Esau was stronger than Jacob. And after they saw uh, the land of Canaan, they said, they're giants, they're greater than us. And to them, we are like grasshoppers. Yes. If you see the world in the wrong way, it may seem like they have a greater strength than us. The, even Goliath, he was a, a giant. It was a greater force. You know, how strong was this uh, Og, the king of Bashan? The uh, bed that he slept in was made in iron. If we see the uh, world the wrong way, we will be deceived by this. 
It may seem like we have nothing and we have we lack things, and we may be deceived by that. It may seem like the, say, the forces of Satan is greater than us, but do not have misconception. God is telling us to fight with those people. In verse 2 today, it said, Do not be afraid of them. This means that God is fighting for us. If there is something that we must do, it's going inside of the blessing of world evangelization. It's like, do not be afraid of them because everything is given to you. Because in everything, there is an answer. That is why, do not be afraid. Hey, you could be diseased, but God has an answer, and that is why, do not be afraid. Today, it's saying, do not be afraid, because God is fighting for me. It said, leave no survivors. It says, so the Lord our God also gave into our hands all king of Bashan and all his army. We struck them down, leaving no survivors. This means, discard all of our unbeliefs. If you see in verse 4, at that time, we took all his cities. And we must conquer them. And that is why if you see in verse 6, it said, destroying every city, men, women, and children. It's not just uh, discarding our unbeliefs. It's, it's not just uh, destroying their cities, but it's killing off their descendants also. Because even through this small uh, hole, Satan could deceive us. That is why do not leave not even a small hole where Satan could deceive you. So just cut that off. Cut that uh, hole where uh, Satan could deceive you. That is what God is telling us. He said, discard all of our own beliefs. Do you have worries uh, regarding your future? Just entrust everything to God and we must just go towards God. Because God is guiding us. So what must we fight and what must we discard and cut off? God will let us know and He will make us have victory inside of the spiritual battle. We must always remember this. And we must fight. So to, in order to fight, we must hold on to the promise of God first. To fight the spiritual battle, there is a promise that God has given us. All the problems of this world, if you do not solve it through a a fighting a spiritual battle, then these problems will not be solved. All the problems of this world, we must uh, solve it through fighting the spiritual battle. That is why the content that God has given us is fighting the spiritual battle. In Genesis 3.15, He will crush your head and you will strike His heel. That's the offspring of woman. In John 16.33, it said, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. God has given us the gospel first and made us fight the spiritual battle. If you see Matthew 10, God called, uh, Jesus called the 12 disciples and made them, pair them up as pairs. And they said, I gave them the authority to drive out evil spirits and the heals of every disease, heal every diseases and sicknesses. And if you see in Luke 10, 19, God has called the 70 uh, lay workers and told, told them, 
I have given you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Uh, that's, that's right. The children of God that we have become, God has give, already given us the authority to win the spiritual battle. It's not something that we work hard and work diligently for. It's the, as a children of God, the authority to win and have victory over the spiritual battle is already given to us. And that is why if you see in verse 3 today, it says, So the Lord our God also gave into our hands our king of Bashan, he has already gave it to it into our hands. It is talking about the complete victory. Inside of the field, if when we are fighting the spiritual battle, it is completion. It's when we fight hundred times, we'll win hundred times. Because this is a battle that God fights for us. So do not fight the wrong battle. When you are fighting the true spiritual battle with the uh, authority of the name of Christ, I bless you in the name of Christ that you will have victory inside all of your field. And secondly, then what is the, our target or object, object that we must fight? Uh, God told the Israelites to go inside the land of Canaan, but there was already seven tribes and 31 kings in there, and they're waiting. But that seven tribes and 31 kings, what does it symbolize? It is idols. Same for the Og, the king of Bashan, it's not just that person, it's the uh, uh, forces of darkness in that person's background. That is why the true fight that we must fight, what is the fight that we must fight? It's, it's not the people that we fight. It's fighting with Satan who is driving all the mankind to uh, darkness. That is who we must fight against. That is why the three organizations that is caught by Satan is who we must fight with. How must we fight them? Is imprinting the word and that's how we fight. If we do not have the gospel, we'll just lose to the three organizations. We won't even know what three organizations means. Right now, the three organizations, they're not really doing much, they're not saying anything, but they have conquered the world. Because they do not have the gospel, they don't know the gospel, that is why they cannot even fight against the three organizations. They don't even know that they're living inside of the hands of the three organizations. It's the same as the Israelites. When, when Goliath was mocking mocking the Israelites, they couldn't do anything about it. And that is why David went. And it's the same for us. Right now, the churches that have lost hold of all the spiritual things are losing. It's not the worldly thing. Genesis 3, 6, and 11 is right now, even inside the church, they're caught by 3, 6, and 11 because things it, it may seem really uh, pleasuring to them. That is why they follow after that. They're self-centered, they're material well-centered, and they place success first. Because this looks so uh, 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 so good to them. That is why they follow after this. 
That's why the three uh, organization, the Freemasons, they have uh, caught all of our all the world with darkness. We're fight. We must fight with this. They have caught. They said in ten years they will uh, capture all of our prosperities. That, that's what they're doing, and that's what we must fight against. What is the three organization? Is the New Age movement, the Freemason movement, and the Jewish? And through weird uh, religious organization, Satan is hindering us, and that's what we must fight against. And during Daniel's age, during the age of Babylon, it, it, that, that place became an empire. And they made uh, gold statues and made all the people bow down to it. And whoever rejects that, they will be thrown inside of the pit of fire. That's the age, right? the world today. Right now, Satan is making all the people bow down to the world right now. And we must fight against this. And secondly, what, who must we fight with? We must fight the battle where we save those people that are captured in darkness, curses, and destiny. It's a fight, it's a battle to save those people that are caught inside of those. It's uh, Acts 13, 16, and 19. It's myths, sorcery, and idols. And right now, they made this into a culture. And made, they made it into a masterpiece and made all the people fall into this. And that is why nobody can just avoid this. Because they're living inside that culture. That is why if you see Ephesians 2, 2 it says, uh, you, live, you follow the ways of this world and the, the rulers of the kingdom of the air. They made this into a uh, they placed it like a culture and it made it so beautiful. And that is why they made them make the people fall into this culture. And through this, in the background of this, it is the spirit. And the spirits that is now at work is the sons of disobedience. That is why they have no choice but to follow after the devil. Because they're inside of this, that is why they all, they're they always in failure and they, they're they always in uh, problems and worries. And we must save those people. How must we save them? Through the world movement, we must fight this battle. How must we fight? Do you know how much of a great spiritual blessings and spiritual works arise when you're giving worship? Do you know how many works that God raises when you're giving worship? You're a children of God. You have the gospel. And when you're holding on to the covenant and you're giving worship, that is when the throne of a uh, blessing of the throne is upon you. And the works that transcend time and space will be shown and the lights to shine the 237 nations will be all the places that uh, that is connected with us. The work of recreation arises in the places that is connected with me and all of the fields around me. And that is why I don't uh, lose hold of this time of worship. Really enjoy all of our background. That is the blessing of the throne. That is the transcending time and space and uh, the light to shine the 237 nations. And with this, you can save the people that are falling into darkness, curses, and destiny. And last, what is the 
battle that we must fight. Right now is the war of the summits. But the God, uh, God has given us this promise first. He called us as a summit. In Genesis 1.27, said, and through 28, so be fruitful and increase in numbers, fill the air, earth and subdue it. And also, you will uh, go up the Most High, and He's given us the time, uh, the promise of the summits. Uh, Marks. In the book of Mark, God called the disciples and said, I will be with you. And Jesus said to the disciples before he went up to the heaven, He said, Until the ends of the earth, I will be with you. And that was the promise of the summit. And in Acts 1 8, it said, But you will receive power, and the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. He said, This means God has called us as the summit. And this is the uh, answer that, as a summit that we must enjoy, but all of the believers have lost hold of this. And that is why the forces of darkness have caught the world and called the elites and dragging the world. It's the war of the summits right now. Right now, through the few people, they're moving the world. It's the war of the summits. That is why to do the uh, fight the battle of the summits, that is why inside of all our daily life, we must have a time, uh, the summit time. Just really concentrate in the war for 10 minutes. Really to have victory in as a summit, at least 10 minutes have a time of the summit so that's a summit time where you concentrate on your on the word just as we the or the choir saying today they're in midst of disaster but they don't know if this is a disaster or not they're in midst of pain but they don't know if that's pain or not god has given us this great blessings but they we have lost hold of all of this and that is why Satan has caught the world and dragging the world to darkness. That is why it's the uh, summit war. First, what we must fight against is the three organization. Because our prosperity, when they are born, they have no choice but to enter into that culture. And that is why it's the curses and disasters because of the Acts 13, 16, and 19. And we must save those people. And the last battle that we must fight is the war of the summits. God gives us the reward first, and through that, we are fighting the spiritual battle. God has given us the evidence first and He's making us fight the spiritual battle. Let's look at verse 7. Verse 7. Let's read it all together. But all the livestock and the plunder from their cities we carried off for ourselves. What does this mean? God has given us the uh, reward first. God has given us the evidence first. And knowing uh, who we must fight the spiritual battle with and through that God is making us fight the spiritual battle and I'll come to the end of my words God calls the individual that fight this war and God uses the churches that fight this spiritual battle to fight this spiritual war or battle we must know who we must fight against and you must know what the mystery you must hold on to and fight with. Really knowing the mystery of the things that you must hold on to and to win the spiritual battle. And I bless you in the name of Christ that you 
be that all evangelist. Jesus, give you, give you thanks. Let us let the believers of Hana Church be the people who fight the good battle. And you have given us the mystery of spiritual battle. And through that, let all of our region be saved and all the 237 nations be saved. In Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.